Good day, peoples. Good day. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Today we're going to have a special episode. Today, you know, we're going to have the youngsters doing it today. So this should be good. What's up? I'm a white set. What's going on, Dean? What's up, Meb? What's up, guys? Yeah, some people are probably saying, well, I thought we were going to cancel the Wednesday night gigs. The King B joined us. What's up, King B? Who else? Where Where are you guys from? Let me know where you're from. What city? What industry? Fremundo's in the building. Yeah, we, uh, I'm Cor Lamont's in the building. All right. SJ, where are you guys from? What's your industry? Uncle Aubrey, tell me where you're from. Newark, what's your industry? What industry are you guys in? Julian, Tampa Transportation, Tuscaloosa, Orlando, Roofing. Okay, I know who my man is. CEO Midas Group. Trucking. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. We got some uh, Baltimore. Skyland. Trying to figure this thing out. Let me let me see how I okay. Baton Rouge. Okay, Baton Rouge. We got some people out there in Baton Rouge. I'm probably I'm probably just like you're just destroying the name, but that's the way I read it. That's the way we were taught in school how to say pronounce it. Oh, free throw Frank just showed up. What's up, free throw Frank? I saw the picture of you with your kid. Janitorial, specifically fogging. Yeah, we got some people doing fogging stuff down in Miami. Jay Billionaire joined us. I had a good week this week, actually. We had a really good week, doing a lot of stuff. Keisha Phoenix, Altona. I mean, look, I've been out here asking for money for you guys. So I've been out here talking to people, trying to get money for all of you out here so we can help you grow your businesses, build businesses. We, you know, we're trying to raise capital to help put back into your hands so that you can build real long-term sustainable businesses. So. Had a couple conversations about that. Fat Joe always coming live when I'm on live. Um, we had some conversations about that this week. Uh, met with some procurement people that are really high up and some projects. Um, we've just been doing really well. Uh, my t-shirt, it says, God's got this. It comes from uh, Miami Vineyard Church. So just, there you go. But uh, yeah, we've been we've been putting in a lot of work today. Um, we want to have a conversation. By the way, if you have any questions, drop it in the chat. We'll we'll get to it. Um, we've got some, you know, I invited a couple people that's going to come talk. Two of our interns today, uh, they're going to tell you their stories, um, what the, you know, what they've learned. Demetrius just showed up, and uh, we're going to let them kind of you know take the mic today and shine, while you know more people come on board. We'll let them share their stories. They've had some experiences. Colin, I was trying to figure out your name, Colin, 80 Studios. I was, Colin, I was trying to figure out what was your name on IG so I can tag you on the new book. By the way, this is the first proof of the new book. Just came. And uh, Colin, I was trying to show you that you, I had you in the book here, but I couldn't figure out what was your stuff. There you go. Where you at, Colin? Can you see your name on here? Tiffany. There you go. Right there. My man, Colin. Yo, I was trying to tag you. So, all right. Well, look, let's get started because an hour goes really fast. And, uh, you know, I talk a lot. I'm, you know, the people I got coming on, they talk a lot. So, uh, who wants to start? Who wants to start? 
Matt, you want to you want to start, Matt? Why don't you, Matt? Why don't you start? Where is that? I saw him on here. What's up, Mimi J? All right, Matt. Let's, uh... Matt, what's going on, brother? How are you? Your hair looks fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to look fly today. Okay, trying to look fly? All right, all right. Matt, what's going on, man? Uh, nothing much, you know, just working. Working yeah. every day. No, no, every listen, that's what you got to do. Yeah. Now... Um, by the way, for those of you who don't know, Mev's one of our new interns out here. He just started probably, what, a month ago? Yeah, about a little bit more than a month, yeah. Yeah, a month ago, and he reached out to me. Mev, how old are you? I'm 22. 22, okay. He's yeah. 22. He's at Boston University? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. And he reached out to me. He said he had been watching my content and videos, and uh, he had won some contracts. So I said, look, you got to come on and tell the people because, um, you know, there's a lot of self-doubt out here and we want to encourage folks. And then also, um, you know, we just want to, I've got a quote here on the screen. It says, the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, and the great teacher inspires. So today we want to do some inspiration, okay, because I think a lot of times, uh, as I say, and as you know, uh, Meb's now answers the phones. He's answering the email. So if you send an email to service at govcongiants.com, he's the one that actually answers the emails and is responding to you out there. So he's the one that you're going to be interacting with. Uh, Maria is now doing more high-level stuff, so she's not taking the emails and she's not taking the calls. So this is who you're going to be speaking to. But I just want you to know, right, that you're not, you're not speaking to some regular guy. He's just not some random kid at Boston University. So Matt, tell them, tell, man, the extraordinary things that you've done and what you're working on so that the people can know exactly who they're talking to. I, like, you know, they probably like, oh, this guy, he's not Maria. You know, I want Maria yeah. on the phone. No, I'm not, I'm, not as, I'm not as pretty as Maria. So okay, there you go. Pretty. See? All right. That's me. That's... <laughs> you get me. But you have your own, listen, but you have your own right. You've earned your own keep. So tell us, tell us now, how did you kind of get into the space? Yeah, so um, I came in from East Africa. I okay. came to, to, to the U.S. for like school. And my dad used to do a lot of government contracting uh, back in uh, East Africa. So I was like, you know what? One day I was just like, you know, my, my pockets are kind of empty. And I was like, you know what? I need to like see if I can make my own money and see uh -huh. how, that, how that goes. So I was like, I right, let me try to do something I, I know how to do, right? So I was, it's a bit different than East Africa. So I came in. I was like, I was trying to look online. I was like, there's nowhere I can find anything about government contracting. Like, why can I find anything? So then one of my friends sent me a link for PTAC. And I was like, I, I spoke to them on the phone. I was like, this is what I do. They're like, what industry are you in? What's your annual turnover? And I was like, oh my God. I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, it's already over. I need over, a business man. plan. <laughs> I was like, it's already over, man. Like, I had an idea of how it worked. So I was doing my research and, and, and everything online. I used to, like, I spent like about one month. I started my company about a year ago uh, okay. in August. And I was like, I need to like, figure out how this, this works, right? So I went to P-TECH and then they, they asked me like all these questions. They were like, it's kind of like heartbreaking as well because I, they were like, they were like, oh, you have, you could, don't, you have to have, you have to have past experience. You have to have it. And I was like, I was like, no. I was like, my dreams are already. <laughs> You're like, my dreams are crushed. You. I'm done. I was like, I'm it's over. I'm throwing man. the it's towel. Over. I'm throwing the towel. <laughs> but then I was like, so I went to my friends. I was like, guys, it's kind of crazy, but it's what I'm trying to do, right? Who, who's with me? You know, I was like, I, when I went to school, they were like, there were like five of my friends are chilling uh, in, on the porch. So I was like, I was like, so who's with me? Who's trying to do government contracting with me? And then was like, <laughs> no i was like damn i was like all right that hurt but two of my friends asked me what's government contracting so i was like i broke it down to them i was like let's watch a movie war dogs so i sat down okay. and I, was like, okay. I was like we can do this but with other things i was like right. don't think about right. like ammunition let's think of some other, other thing and he's like so what do you got in mind i was like i really don't know like i was like i have no idea sure, so right, right. like 
all right, let's see how we're going to do this. So one of my friends gave me funding. So I, I knew him uh, through school. I used to talk to him. Like, we should, like, talk about business. He's, like, an entrepreneur. His, his family owns hotels. So he, he got, like, he gets, like, a crazy salary. A crazy <laughs> salary. I'm, mean, like, every, like, every, like, month his dad will give him money, right? So he's, uh -huh. like, I'm looking to invest this. And I was, like, I got your the best investment right now. Okay. I got okay. you. And I got okay. you. So he gave me, he gave me $10,000 to start off my company with. And I, I, I asked my friend who's an accountant now. So all these guys work with me for free. Like, I don't pay them. I, they just, like, are in the idea, right? So, like, right. they love the idea. So yeah. I was like, let's build something right now. So like a baby friend, Zuckerberg. You're like oh, a baby yeah. Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like he was a bad guy, kind of low-key. But, you know, I'm trying to say, <laughs> right? Uh, uh -huh. So I was like, let's start looking at what we can do, right? So we started looking at budgets. We started looking at, like, state budgets, like, who has, like, the biggest, like, budget. So we started looking at New York. And I was like, okay, let's start looking at some samples about some small municipalities within New York, right? Okay. So, like, we look at Rockland County. We look at other, other counties. And I know you don't champion, like, um, uh, uh, state. But this is, like, you know, it's, like, starting tiny, tiny. Yeah, so, I was, no, like, okay. I was like, all right, let's look. So, I found this tiny, tiny county in New York that had a contract for four pages, right? It was, like, a four-page contract. Uh -huh. It was so easy to read. I was like, that's not bad. I was like, and then they were, like, asking for clay targets, clay shooting targets. Like, right. like little ones, right? So I was like, I don't know what to do about this, but like, let's start looking at online. So we started Googling some stuff. And then I found this guy who supplies clay targets in Canada. So I was like, um, so I, I, I did some research about how to find historic data to figure out what my competitors were bidding before, okay. the person who won before. Right. And I found the Freedom of Information Act that allows yeah. us to like have like, you know, free access to like the public procurement. So I was right. like, all right, let's see how much this person like won this contract for last time. It was like $8,000. And my supplier was was quoting me at uh, at around it was eight thousand five hundred. I was already already over that, and I was like, I didn't mm. have my margin or anything. I was like, damn. So okay. I was asking my friends like, so what should we do? He's like, let's put in an offer at ten thousand, ten thousand flat. And I was like, you know what? It doesn't hurt. Like we're not paying anything else, right? So right. when we filled out the the documents, he sent it out. Oh, that's my friend right there, Anthony Frasquelli. <laughs> that, that's him. That's him. That's the guy I did it with. All right, um, Anthony. Yeah. Anthony, all right. So we filled it out together, right? Good. And we sent it out. And then, you know, days went by, like weeks, you know, we were like, you know, this is a proof of concept. We want to see if this actually, like, we if we hit now, we'll start right. moving forward with it, right? right? So he's like, I got an email. I turned over the next, like, a, like a week after I sent the, the email, right, from Westchester County. I, I was like, just woke up. I looked at my phone. I see purchase order. And I was like, I was like, no way, bro. I opened this thing. I zoomed in. I like looked at it five times. I was like, that says my name. That says my company name. And that says the price we want. I lost my mind. I woke up my neighbors. I ran downstairs <laughs> to my mom. I was like, we won the contract. My mom has no idea what I'm talking about. Right, and right. like, I was like, this is the best day of my life, right? So uh, it's crazy. So we finally did it. We, I called the, the guy. I was like, yes, can you deliver to this place? I right. drove from here to Westchester County for like a profit of $1,000. And my mom's like, why are you driving all the way there for just $1,000? Like people were looking at me like, I was like, I'm telling them I'm, I can't go to party on the weekend. I have to go to Westchester County to uh -huh. deliver my clay targets. They're like, how much are you making? It's like $1,000. They're like, ah, it's not, that's not too much, bro. Right. And I was like, it's about the relationship. You don't understand. Yeah. I was like, I'm right. not in a relationship with these people so they give me more contracts. Right. Right? Right. Right. So I got there. I started like, unloading the clay targets myself by hand because I didn't want anything to fall anything to break. I was there for two hours unloading wow. so unloading stuff and then they were like thank you so much and then so what happened is this is this is I still have this is like what motivates me so I keep this at my desk this is the first thing I ever sold the government so I keep uh, this and always think about this is clay targets right so this okay. is like, like uh I think it was like 10,000 cases of these so this gives me motivation right so I I started calling them afterwards right asking them um how do we do can we do anything better like you know how was our service they were like you are the best you were the best um like clay target suppliers we've ever had and we're gonna give you contracts every two months for clay targets like the same amount and i was like <laughs> i was like you i'm the best you've ever had. right you're like wait are I was you? like, are <laughs> you best serious man? this is the first time i'm doing this man like it's uh -huh. crazy. So he's like, but he's you like, know what, man? First of all, you just said something, and Anthony kind of echoed that, which is you're a great relationship builder. People look at it like a thousand dollars, like, oh, it's just a thousand dollars, right? Because they they weren't thinking, so they would have might have had a drop shipper drop ship it, or mm -hmm. you know, and it could have been yeah. broken, maybe mm -hmm. arrived late. 
that's what the last person did. The last person did that. They broke it. They broke so many of their targets and they still build them for it. Right. And they were like, no, we don't want to do this. So right. that relationship that you champion so much is the key. Like, it's, right. it's huge, right? And you even sold it for a higher price than they were used to paying. Yeah. And, and they were just happy with the service that I provided to, like, right. get it to them. So I was like, right. you know, what? that's amazing. So th that happened. And then um, it, it was crazy. So then Anthony and me were sitting down. We're like, okay, this is cool. This is actually working. Let's do something else. Yeah. Then I went to Staples. Like, same thing. This ag agency asked for, for labels. For like labels to stick onto things, so I was just the staples, and I was like, you know what? Let's let's try it out. Why, why not? I bought it from Staples. I sent in the the offer, and they accepted it. And I was like, <laughs> I went to Staples. I was like, what is happening? And this is it was crazy. So I, I started winning those contracts, right? And uh -huh. and then me me and Anthony were trying to figure out who we can look for for some advice, for some mentoring, and how to take this to the next scale, right? right. So we sat there. We were like researching online, and Anthony called me. He's like. Meant I found the guy. I was like, "Who do you find?" He's like, I found the guy on YouTube. This guy on YouTube is doing. He's telling. He's telling people exactly what you're telling people. And I was like, "No way!" I was like, "Really? Who is it?" He's like, "Eric Coffee. Look him up." So I started looking up your videos. And I went to Anthony's house. We sat there for like hours. Pull, up, put your videos on the big screen. Montage. Eric <laughs> Coffee. Eric Coffee. Eric Coffee. I was like, our jaws are on the floor. We're like, this guy is saying because I t I was telling people. Right. Like, you know, we could do this business, but no one was listening to him. No one was taking me right, seriously, right? right, and, right. It, and and the P-Tech was saying that people use government contracting as a, as a, as an additional source of revenue for their main yeah. business that they have. Yeah. And I was trying to do a, a business solely on government contracting, right. Right? right? So I was like, this is there's no there's no shot that I'm going to make this. Yeah. And then and then you came along and you were like yeah. saying this, and we were just like mind blown. We're like, this yeah. is so sick. Yeah. And then we started doing it. And I linked up with you. I messaged you and. uh Life's been good. Now, let me ask you something, because this part, all right, and I'm, I'm very proud of your story. I love your story. It's great. And, and by the way, one of the things that I told Mavs when we first came in is, hey, look, I'm very proud of you, but that's not what I teach. <laughs> yeah. I teach the relationship yeah. building part, but yeah. not the local contracts. But I'm very happy because he did practice. Uh, he, you know, he, he got an understanding of how contracts work. Uh, he, pro he proved to people that you didn't need past performance. He proved, right, that the guy who's the first, and, and, and one of the things that I say all the time, the government does not get the best people. They get the people who actually go to them. So that's why there's so much room and opportunity for all of us who want to be better contractors, who want to actually give good service to charge even a higher price because they're not getting the best people. They're just getting the people who respond. Yeah. And oftentimes that's people who are accustomed to doing government contracts. They take it for granted. Like you said, they give them broken targets and they still charge them. And yeah. so those people really, um, I found myself, Mips, personally, when I started working in Connecticut, they were kicking a guy off the base because they kept giving him chances. He wouldn't listen. They were so used to being the man on campus and getting all of the work and all the money that they're like, oh, you can't find anybody else. And I'm the only one. And we, mm -hmm. we showed up, came along, kicked them off, and they brought us on and gave us a $4 million contract. Yeah. Now, um, the funny thing is, now you met me, right? How, like, how long ago was it that you met me? Like, like we, I mean, not met, but like we DM'd and we start talking about working together. That's yeah, that was over the, the summer. I think it was in July. Okay, July. Yeah. Now, now, you went to a meeting with me. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's let's talk about the meeting and mm -hmm. and what went down because not many people get a chance to go to meetings with me. And yeah. by the way, wait, hold on. Before you say that, if you did not watch Monday's video, we talked about mentors. And we and one thing that uh, Meb's friend just said is he's a relationship builder. And we talked about giving, right? Giving, giving, giving. He reached out to me, right? But now, I wasn't the first person he reached out to. You also reached out to some other people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who else did you reach out to? We talked about it today. I reached out to the guy who, was, who actually was the war dog, like the actual, the dude who actually is the guy that the movie's based on. Uh -huh. And I, I messaged him. I was like, and my first, I think my first line was, I think this is going to, this is probably a long shot, but <laughs> do you think you could give me some like advice? I have a lot of these questions. I'm trying to get into government contracting, but I'm not trying to do ammunition. I'm trying to do something else. Could you show me how you started? Right. And he wrote me like two, two words saying what questions. And then just, I poured it on from there. So one of the things that I think that that's a great illustration uh, is the fact that, you are not afraid to reach out to people. Yeah. No, you right? Can't. I think a lot of us, we, 
so many of us have watched the movie War Dogs. I don't know how many of us actually thought to reach out to the guy who was the movie was based off of. Yeah. But you did. And then also you watched my videos and then you reached out to me. Yeah, because I feel like it doesn't hurt, right? All you see is like seen and then not reply. You left on red, you get ghosted. And it's like, all right, we move on then, right? Yeah. It's, so now you reach out to me, we talk, you say, okay, man, we're gonna, this guy's smart. I like him, he's energetic. We're gonna bring him on. Now, um, and then it so happens that I'm reworking up in Boston area and in, in that area. I've got a meeting coming up. Tell, yeah. talk, tell us the story. That's crazy because I was like, everything in life happens for a reason, right? Because I was in Florida Right. And you were you were like you're from Florida. And, right. and then and then I came back to Boston and you were doing you were coming up here. And I was like, this dude is following. This is great. No, it's, uh -huh. I'm joking. But like <laughs> this guy is like always like around. So I was like, I gotta take this opportunity. So I, I reached out to you. I wanted to get to like, you know, get to know you, like get to see you like and right. like three D but sure. after this. Yeah. And then I had no idea that I was going to a meeting. <laughs> so I, I thought it was just like a, hey, what's up? How are you? Like, you know? And then I came in and then it was like a proper meeting. And I was like, and I, you could probably tell how clumsy I was, but I was like knocking into stuff. I was like, <laughs> I was so stiff. I was like, I don't know what to do, man. But it was a really eye opening experience. And it got me excited because like to be part of a community like this, like of like minded right. people. Right. And like, it's not just people talking about it, but giving advice, but actually showing practically that this is what we're doing. Right. And it, it like, get me excited because you guys were talking about such big things you know like you like talking about such big things like in the in the in the m's you know i'm just dealing with the thousands here you guys right, right, are right. like in the hundreds over there and i was like yeah. oh my god i was like i'm in the right place but i didn't say anything i was so <laughs> nervous uh one of your friends was like clowning me all the time he's like you don't talk you're a ventriloquist or something I was like, hey <laughs> man because i'm used to talking to my friends about this because like that's a level of like no right well you're, like, you're comfortable more, with that yeah. but you guys are like miles ahead and so it just makes me want to push myself even more <laughs> your boy said he's the only one ever put up with you talking about government contracts <laughs> oh yeah no i i talked his ear off like he was it was like with the phone we're like we're at a night out we're at the club me and him would like have like little little conversation like i'm like let's, let's come here where the music's quiet i'm thinking about <laughs> this let's skim my mind right now you know yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. but it's no. crazy because i use a nugget that you said like you said like for example reach out to the contracting uh, person that you already right. know and ask what else can i do what else can i provide right. and i did that i called them and they were like yeah you supply us the clay targets Try can you supply us a shotgun ammo to shoot the clay targets as well and i was like and they were like this is the price we wanted at, and we will give you we'll, like we'll give you the like whole contract for a year and i was mm. like Wow. I was like, I wish I had a guy to do this. Wow. wow. That's how I reached no, out to you. I was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. No, let me tell you, that's a good story. And and, and by the way, that first meeting that we were at with, uh, that Meb sat in, we were with uh, one of our tribal partners that we had just brought into town. And he has 100 million bonding. And so we, Meb was in on the meeting with uh, a tribal partner, uh, two companies that did $28 million each. And we were with a former chief of contracting for GSA, who had an unlimited warrant and had written contracts to the hundreds of millions of dollars. And that was his first meeting that he sat in with us at a big round table that he couldn't fit in the room because it was like 10 people in the room and he had to sit off in the corner in the back and, and just be quiet. So, yep. uh, <laughs> yeah. but it was, was exciting. Great. It was exciting. It was great. No, but and, this is definitely uh, like, I was, I was like shocked that I found someone on YouTube who does exactly what I was telling my friends, let's do. And you said it, and I was like, it's meant to be, man. Right. And then, and then yeah. you know, and again, one, and then you were able to actually come in and see what we did, like, in real life. Yeah. Not, like, uh, you know, just behind the screen or behind the YouTube. Something. You were actually able to come in and see us putting paper to pen and plan the strategy out. And then now, obviously, with us working together, uh, you get to hear the conversation about the things that we're working on moving forward. Yeah, no, it's 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 crazy. It's been a it's an insane journey, you know. <laughs> no, no, and, and we're just it. getting started, buddy. We're just exactly. getting started. In fact, um, today we connected um, one of our students who won the contract in Africa. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, we just connected her with uh, another uh, potential client of ours that uh, does base management contracts to go after something um, over in Africa for base facilities management. So we're gonna we're gonna get to Tanzania. So don't worry, we're gonna get there. We we are going to get there. We're already in Africa. We're yeah. gonna do a base management contract in Africa. So Tanzania, we're, it's next.
Africa's the move, man. We're, nice. we're gonna, we'll get there. We'll get. We'll take you there. We'll take you back. Hey, man. Listen. Thank <laughs> you for coming yeah. on, man. Um, no, thank you so much it. for having me, and thank you for all the great advice. I appreciate it. And no, everyone thanks. who's listening, this man is like talking facts. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. No, yeah, no, no, listen. Great. And by the way, again, when you call that number seven eight six four seven seven zero four seven seven, that's who you'll be speaking to. When you send an email, service at govconjains.com, he's the one that's going to be responding to your emails now. So again, uh, we're propping him up. He's going to be the next baby goat. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. Right. I'm trying. Thank you so much. All right, brother. Appreciate Thank it. you, sir. Be good. All right. How was that? That was a good first start. No, nah, today's session, we're dealing with the youngins. We are bringing the youngins on because I know as we get older, right, we all become more fearful. We, you know, we become like afraid to uh, try things because the world has beat us up and the world has like stolen our, our, our sense of imagination, our sense of wonder. And so again, when we get in our 30s and our 40s, we're like, uh, that, does that work? Can, you know, can I try this? I'm not really sure. And, and again, we question ourselves, we doubt ourselves. That's why, again, the power of the youth, 22 years old, right? The power of the youth, man, these, they're courageous. Like when we, so people always are talking about um, that generation, right? Like, oh, that generation is lazy. Uh, they don't want to do anything and this and that. Well, that's what we're showing you today, that we're going to go against the, the myths and we're going to show you about people who are actually not lazy and we're going to show you that generation that the millennial generation that really they want to get up and they want to make stuff happen and they're we're here with us working with us supporting the movement supporting what we're doing um we are bringing the next generation of government contractors ushering them in brandon where you at thank you by the way, he said, like my shirt. Colin says, fearless. Let's go, Colin. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, what's going on, baby? What's up, what's up? How you doing? Good. Okay, so for all of you out there um, that don't know Brandon, was his IG handle what? Coffee No Cream? Nah, I, I, I didn't <laughs> use that. Brandon, Brandon Guffcon Giant. <laughs> Brandon Guffcon Giant. That's what I want to use. Why are you trying to switch your handle? <laughs> like, nah, two different things. Good. So, yeah. uh, actually, um, so Brandon, listen, tell us. I know probably a few months ago, um, you started getting interested and excited about contracts and things like that. Um, it's been a few months. It's been since the start of COVID. Yeah, but yeah, that is my. I started a new website in the background. Yeah, call it. It's been since the start of COVID. Yeah. Okay, so now you actually helped us out uh, during COVID, and you're helping us get registered with states and cities. Tell us about like a little bit about that experience and what that was like. Um. Well, I mean, I, I was so I was in charge of basically getting the company registered. Okay. Um, with every state, well, all the states and um, a lot of municipalities. So I just, it's, a, it's, a, it's very different. Each website is different. So it's not like, you know, you can just go there and it's one central website for all the states or one central website for all the municipalities or any of the big cities. It's all different. It's all a different setup. Um, some of them require you to pay money to register. Some of them have a, a crazy website. Some of them you have to do like an actual write-up. Like you have to actually like, like edit a PDF and like send it to them and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, and then I had to, you know, I had to basically reach out, um, and contact, um, companies about PPE. So it was my first experience really dealing with anything that had to do with States. <laughs> um, so, you, know, it's, you know, it's interesting because again, I know a lot of people, uh, you know, they talk about state contract, state contracting, but, when you know like you said when you did the registration they were not all the same no and when you did the bidding they weren't all the same no <laughs> was there anything the same a a couple of them but like very far and few between like okay. everything was basically different okay all right so we had different websites different bid sites different registrations everything everything okay all right all right so now let's fast forward 
um, to, and that kind of the story I want to talk about, because, you know, we only have 30 minutes. Uh, lately, and by the way, Brandon is, is new. He just started working with us. At the same time, Mavs, we decided to bring on three interns. Brandon's new. And yeah, Free Throw Frank, uh, yes, we are related. If you haven't guessed by now, that's baby coffee. So that is, he's actually my son. So yes, we are related. Um, so, but that doesn't change anything, by the way, Frank, that doesn't change anything because Brandon comes from a different background than I do. Um, he grew up and he could, you know, he could tell you basically what he, you know, what he did basically throughout school and everything like that. Yeah, I was, um, I did acting. I was yeah. on that's me and all that stuff, so right. Um, that's what I did mostly. Yeah, so he, he has no knowledge or experience of government contractors other than hanging out with my friends uh, that we are all government <laughs> contractors, but he was a little kid back then, so he had no idea where the money came from. He, he didn't ask any questions like any other kid does. So it's only recently uh, when COVID hit that really he decided to come and start working with us. Is that fair? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so again, he's really just been in the background, helping with the editing the videos, helping with uh, changing the thumbnails and things like that. Okay. So now, what happened? What changed? <laughs> um. So, I was basically I was listening to all the calls because, um, you know, we started getting I basically started getting on all the calls, every single call, um, all the lives and stuff, and I seen people different different stories about people and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, everybody was winning contracts and, you know, it was good, very inspiring. And then we had, we had went on a boat, um, like last week and, um, we were in the boat and we were chilling <laughs> and, and we were looking at the bill, you know, we were looking at the buildings and we look at the houses and, you know, it was a couple of houses, 12 million, a couple of houses, 3 million. Uh -huh. And you just kept talking about it. And you're like, that's within, you know, you're basically saying these things are within reach. They're right. not super far. They're right. not, um, right. You know they're not like a, a mystical thing, so it was like okay, and I, and that sat with me. And then I thought I, I thought about the boat club fee in my head. I right. kept remembering the boat club fee, so I kept yeah. thinking about that. Right. So then I was I was editing literally the weekend right, like literally the weekday right after Monday or Tuesday. I was editing the videos, um, and then I stumbled upon Maria's video of getting her first consulting client. And then when I was looking at the video, um. And I, you know, I, I'm listening to the video more of like from a perspective of like you know time stamping and basically the stuff that I do behind the scenes. But then I just heard her say, "It just wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be." <laughs> and then I don't know why that like when she said that I was like, "Hold up, hold up, hold up, one second. Let me let me listen to what Maria said. Like let me let me actually listen to what Maria said." So I literally played back the video. I just Paul, you know, like Maria said, "Okay, well, at first I did this." Um, and she did, you know, uh, she did some market research, obviously, prior. Um, and then, you know, went on DSBS, Dynamic Small Business. I, I forgot the the the. the, the I don't even know the name. I don't even know the acronym, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but I just did basically all the sets Maria did. Um, I already knew how to do the do the market research, uh, mostly because, you know, I'm on the course. So I've seen the course. I've, right. And by the way, for everybody in the course, um, don't expect to finish. <laughs> I was 80% finished a couple of weeks ago. Now I'm 65%. I don't know how. I don't know where it came from, but I'm further than I was before. So mm -hmm. don't expect to finish <laughs> so fast. But anyway, right. um, I did that. Um, and then I did some market research. I went, found an opportunity. Um, basically looked for some companies that could fit the opportunity. Um, then I looked to see if they, if they done any if they had done any work in the past year or two. Um and I was tr I was really looking for people who done like less than five projects, you know, people who are actually, you know, need help, obviously. So right. I did that. I did like three calls. And then I got a um, first person say, oh, yeah, you know, we can talk Wednesday. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, OK. Like, you know, like and I'm just by the way, I mean, for everybody, I, I don't necessarily know what to say. I, I just knew that <laughs> this is what you had to do, you know, like. And you just do it. Like you, you just reach out. I knew you. I knew you needed help with government contracts because of the information. And I just said I can do it. I just said yeah, I can help. But you, you know what? You told me your spill. It sounded pretty good to me. The spill. I mean, that's just that was acting. To be honest. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> go ahead. Act for the people. Tell the people your spill. Go ahead. Act. For okay. People. So this, my spill act was. Hello. Um. I've 
Well, first of all, I said, hello, you know, my name is Brandon Coffey. I represent um, Evan Coffey LLC. And then I said, um, so I was doing market research and I just saw that, you know, because um, the company I was talking to recently got the 8A certification. So I said, I just saw that you recently got your 8A certification. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Well, um, in, in my market research, I also see that you haven't had a lot of contracts in the past year or two. So, um, and then, you know, and I said, is, is this correct? You know, I, I always ask them, is this correct? You know, all the information I'm searching up. And when they, once they confirm all that's correct, then I say, well, you know, my name is Brandon Coffey. I'm a government consultant. Um, my only job is to help um, companies get government contracts. Um, so, and this is what I'm here for. So I'm here to take your 8A certification um, and use it to your best ability so you're not wasting your 8A certification for nine years straight and then, you know, not getting any contracts. So, I mean, that's just what I said. I can't do it verbatim, but <laughs> that's basically what I said. I just told them not to waste their not to waste that edit certification because uh -huh. you can get a lot more contracts. Okay. Um, and then the dude said, yeah. So he said Wednesday, but he called me Tuesday. Um, and this is last week, by the way. He called me last week, Tuesday, and said that we had to reschedule. So then when I got on the Tuesday call, and I was talking about like, oh, you know, like I have to reschedule and I was like pissy. Well, then, you know, everybody was like, oh, you know, don't have the attitude. You know, like you can't, you did three calls, you know, like. You, you got did three calls, calls and you got one. <laughs> exactly right His three calls and like i won i'm like exactly so i'm just like you know what people okay. tell me that they call the whole list and no one answers and no one responds and i'm just like come on yeah. exactly so i'm just like okay hold up if you're doing you know one person said 100 calls i said okay 100 calls so let me go back let me lick somebody else and it back to three calls you know like it didn't take more than three calls okay find someone find another opportunity three calls I found um, the only plastic manufacturing company in New Jersey. Right. Um, and I reached out to them. Um, and yeah, right now we're, we're trying to get some signed. So they. Okay, but you reached out to them and you, you but you, I mean, again, you educated them and on some of your research, you told them some things. Yes. So I, I reached out to them. Um, I reached out to them, I called them, and then I sent them an email. Um, the 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 president of the company sent the email over to somebody else and they they set up a call with me literally the next day so the next day by the way i did the i did I hold, on, wait, wait. hold on wait you said the president of the company sent your email to somebody else and they set up a yeah. call with you okay yeah. i just want i want people to know that it's how old are you by the way 23 okay a 23 year old called a, a plastics manufacturing company the only one in new jersey and the president of the company sent over his email to somebody else Okay. The only 8A, 8A certified. 8A the certified. only 8A certified one. Okay. All That's right. Manufacturing. Yes. So then he, she, she, she sent it to somebody else. He said, can we set up a call? I set up a call with him. I did. I really did market research because, you know, I didn't know about them being the number one. 8A, I mean, the only 8A certified, all that stuff. But when we got in the call, I didn't talk about none of that. Stuff. Like that, none of the numbers and stuff that I looked up about, you know, and many, sole source awards, right. you know, like. None of that. Any, I didn't talk about none of that. All I said was, listen. Basically, go back to what Meb said. This is a relationship game. Um, I told him, you know, first, first I got on the phone. I said, listen, I'm not selling you anything. It's not a solicitation. It's, this ain't got nothing to do with that, okay? I'm presenting to you an opportunity to just expand your company in the government arena. You guys had three contracts last year. That's great. Very small contracts, but we can make that way bigger. We can get way more contracts. Like, it's not, it's not a problem because you have, you know, you have very big selling points i said the number one selling point you have is you're the you're the only 8a certified plant plastic manufacturer in the whole state i said right. you can easily i said that's an easy selling point uh -huh. i said that's one and then I, I kept going i was like and you have you know you the the next goals that you have um we Basically, the NASCO that they have, the last, the last three NASCO they had, I really forgot which NASCO was going back. I don't even know what NASCO they had. <laughs> All right. but, you knew at the time. You knew exactly. it was important. That's right. Yeah, I knew at the time. But there was, um, there was one company who got sole source every single, every single contract. That you know, like they had, they, they were the, the only same company that got sole source. Them and they got all the sole source. And they got contract. all the sole source. Sources. Right. So right, I was right. telling, them, I was like, listen, they got sole sourced out twelve million dollars last year. Yeah. I said, and. They're not even in your state, so I said, "You." I said, "We can get some of that. We can get the. We can get some of that pie." Right. And I said, "You guys do." And I looked at the revenue. I said, "You guys do one million in revenue." I said, "We could turn it up to three. We right. can very easily." And it's not. It's not gonna be hard. 
I said, it's not going to be a, 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 you know, an overnight process, but you allow me to do the market research. You allow me to take your company to the next level. We can go to the next level. Like, I don't see why we can't. Now, something else was, that we talked about before was you had reached out to some other companies that had already were in that same field also that graduated. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, I reached out to um, a couple companies who actually graduated from 8A um, in the same plastic manufacturing next code. Right. Um, and I haven't, I haven't spoken to them on the phone yet. Um, I, sp I spoke to, I think I spoke to one dude and he told me a couple of things, but it, I didn't like speak to like really anybody like significant on the phone yet. Sure. Um, but yeah. Um, once I, once I can, I already have the list. I already have, I'm waiting for them to sign an agreement and I, I reach out to them. Like, <laughs> as soon as they sign the agreement, I'm calling all, everybody on my so, list. So, all right. So now the, the second guy, what happens next? What happened about the second guy or the second company? So this, How did we get? You said you signed an agreement. You skip a step. I did skip. I'm skipping all that stuff. So, um, he, you know, after after you know, fin I finished my little spiel on the phone. He said it sounds great. Um, he asked me what's the next steps. I said, well, the next step is for us. So, you know, uh, I'll send over the agreement. Um, by the way, I, I still didn't. This is me not know. I still didn't know nothing. Like I'm just talking. Like when, I didn't know he's gonna say next steps. I, I just <laughs> finished my spiel, and then he's like, he's like. No, that you know that's 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 very important. I need to know these things. And he was like, "So what's the next steps?" And I was like, "Oh, well, the next steps is." And then I was looking, I was literally looking at the uh, course, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking at like, well, I have to send over the consultant agreement. And once I send over the consultant agreement, um, we, you know, we could definitely get started. <laughs> so <laughs> and then he's like, "Okay, yeah, send it right over." So then you know, I was already happy. So I called you up. I'm like, "Hey, you know, like they say, yeah, about this other stuff. Like, what? Yeah." Like, <laughs> And then you're like, all right, cool, but you know, we gotta go over the consulting agreement. All so right. um, we went over the um, we went over the consulting agreement literally Sunday, Sunday like literally yeah, a couple Sunday of days ago. Agreement. Agreement. <laughs> um, and then but, we by the way, Sunday, I, I don't think you guys heard this. I I want to repeat this. Sunday, right? Because you guys, I know everybody's TGIF. Sunday, we are going over a consulting agreement so he can send it to this person for them to review. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just one. We did we did record the video. I lost it on my computer, but we did record it. <laughs> so for everyone that will go to your course, Demetrius and Nikki and Colin and Guchar, all of you guys, yes, this will go into your course. So it will make you less completed on your course too. All right, go ahead. So by the way, you know another thing is it's funny that Brandon did not say when Brandon called me and the guy said yes, he was screaming on the phone and he couldn't even hope have his breath. <laughs> yeah. He was That's like, true. Ah, ah, ah. Very true. He was Very like, true. Ah, ah. I was like, what? What are you saying, boy? He's like, ah, ah. the guy, the guy, he, was, he said yes. That's yep. how he was reacting, really. Yep. He, he was not this calm. He was like screaming at, on the phone. I, I didn't even know what he was trying to say to me. He was just like screaming. He was so excited. Yes. Um, I'm missing very big parts of the story. That's a big yeah, part of the story. Yeah, that's a very big part of the story. I'm very calm right now because I'm chilling. Yeah, but he was screaming. He could not I even was screaming. Breathe. He could not even get the words out of his mouth. I, I didn't know what the hell he was saying. I'm like, Brandon, what, what, who do you got? What did you get? Like, did you win the lottery or something? And so, <laughs> all right, so now you did a consulting agreement. All right, we did that Sunday. You sent it over Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay, what happened? <laughs> so we sent it over, Um, I sent it over Monday. Uh -huh. And when I sent it over, um, he sent back a, a email basically saying um that he couldn't um that the, the the attorney didn't didn't advise them to allow me to use the email address right so if there's a way we can get around that but he said he was happy with everything else yeah he said no he said he's excited he's okay, so so he was happy so again this is this is a very it, this is a very good point for people out there in his consulting agreement it says you get 25% of the profit right Correct. okay so the guy's attorney reviewed the agreement, was happy with all the terms, except that they did not want to give Brandon a company email address. Am okay. I correct? Okay. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So no. they're ready for everything else. They just didn't want to give me a company email address. Um, and then we talked it over. We found some kind of discussed little different ways. Yeah. Right. We yeah. Talked it, yeah. So yeah, we we um we had a conversation um actually yesterday, <laughs> like literally yesterday. Yeah. Um. And he was, and then basically, uh, Mr. Coffee was just saying that it's imperative that we get the company email, um, and it's imperative because when you represent yourself to the government agencies, your your whole spiel is to be transparent and say exactly what's going on, and 
and I'm trying to represent a company and I can't send like I just can't send an email from my company's email address talking about I'm representing somebody else's company. Like it's just right. not it isn't it's not it's gonna look fishy. Um right. and Mr. Coffee was telling me earlier about how like the like the government is skeptical of big guys, big greedy companies trying to sneak in and you know, get contracts on the low, like from somebody else. Right. And that's a perfect example of a flag for the government where they're like they'll be like, What's you know, what's going on? So what happens is what he's trying to say again, and I've had this happen to us recently, they want to make sure it's not a shell company or someone pretending to be a small business. Uh there's some examples of that. Um, I forgot the name of the company. Pierce, can you put the name of the company in there that does that now? I think it's A AWS or something like that. Um, but there's some examples of companies that literally uh, they pretend to be small business, right, mm -hmm. to get those contracts. And and so we want to be – we're very cognizant of that and leery, and we just want to be on the same page and make – that's the reason why for the email address. So we are sending an email from the company as if we work for the company – and then that way it's all up and up and it's like, no, we're, we're the small business itself and not some consultant guy representing a company. Because I, I, I could be a consultant that actually comes from a large organization. They don't, the government doesn't know. Yeah. So okay. that's that's the first option. And the second option is um, basically we can partner up. Right. So if he doesn't want me to use their email, um, then we can partner up and I can represent the company from, you know, the, the, our company, Evan Golf, and then, you know. Yeah, they'll basically right. subcontract under us. Yeah, so right. That's so that's it. so I told Brandon that if if he decides not to do that, we can do a joint capability statement with their company, and then I'll let Brandon use Evankov because I have past performance, and then that way uh, when he does a joint capability, now when he's talking to the government, he's still he's still being transparent uh, instead of him being a consultant to them. Uh, we'll be a team and partner to that company. So there's there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I told Brandon, now, personally, I think uh, the other structure that we propose is better because then Brandon is getting his, you know, he's, again, I don't even know these people. I don't even know their name of the company. I know nothing. I only know what he tells me about after the fact. Um, but I, I like the first way because then Brandon deals with them himself and then he gets his own experiences that he can learn from. So uh, to answer your question, no, you don't need a joint, a JV to do a joint capabilities statement. So you don't. All right. Anything else? <laughs> no, nah, that's that's about it. That's literally as that's all the way up to date. That's as of yesterday. I sent the email yesterday. Uh -huh. So we have different options and we could talk about it and I'm waiting for email response back. Okay. So. All, right. all right. Thank you, sir. Let me finish up. We got about twelve minutes. I'm gonna talk to the people. people. <laughs> have Be a good. Well, all right. So how was that? I told y'all we're going to bring the kids out. I told you, 22, 23. Now, I'm wondering, okay, what's your excuse? What y'all going to say next? I'm wondering. I'm, listen, I'm taking away people's excuses. I'm taking away their excuses. I, I Look, I, going back to the quote, the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, the great teacher inspires, so I've already told you, I've already explained it to you, I'm already demonstrating to you, and now I'm expiring you. So I don't want to hear, I can't do it, I don't have the skills. These boys, they like, don't, okay, college, no college, degree, no degree. They don't even have all the right words. They don't, like, they're, they're just, they're no different than any one of us out here. And again, one thing that I learned, is that that applies to all of us like you know when we and tim ferris says this right in tim ferris book he says the same thing which is we're all afraid guys all of us are afraid we are all afraid i promise you the person on the other end is afraid the business owner is afraid the the executives afraid we are all afraid we're all people we're all humans no one is completely like confident and 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 like they're positive that these things are going to work have you ever followed elon musk and spacex and seen the interviews when he goes elon what do you think is going to happen to that rocket ship he says um i don't know i hope it i hope you know it does what it's supposed to do but he doesn't know that for, with certainty no one has absolute certainty with 
uh, any or everything that they do. So we just remember that in your head that we are all operating out of some fear, right? Some of our fears are stronger than other fears. Some are more prevalent than others. But um, I, I just I just want to continue to encourage you, uh, continue to um, be able to show you, demonstrate you, give you other examples, and literally these two. I mean, we have a 7 a.m. calls every Wednesday. We're on a 7 a.m. call. And honestly, they didn't think what they did was a big accomplishment, right? And, I'll, and I'm just being transparent here. Uh, both of them did not feel as what they did were, were as an accomplishment. And, and that's because they were comparing themselves to me. And I told them that's the wrong way to do it, that we should not be comparing ourselves to someone else because for what they've done and what they're doing is huge, right? And I mean, a lot of people out here are looking at what they did and said, wow, they, you haven't even done that part. And so um, I said, no, Mebs, you've done something, right? I mean, regardless of the fact that he it was $1,500, but then it turned into something bigger because he listened and he understood that. He understood the power of the relationships. He understood the power of delivering excellence, going over and above. He didn't have to physically drive there. So many people say, oh, can I drop ship my products? Yes, of course you can drop ship your products. But what happens when they break? How are you ensure quality? He ensured quality by being there and taking it there physically. He, and one of the things that Brandon did not mention to you was that Brandon did market research and he learned about industries and places where there was limited competition, limited opportunity. And, and you are not doing that. You guys are sending me an email asking me to tell you where's their... A, a market at where you, you don't have there's no competition you're sending me emails asking me eric hey man tell me what's the industry to get into where it's a lot easier you have to do that research for yourself and find that out that's your job to do because i can't like give you a perfect example brandon came to me and he said dad did you know that in vermont there's no 8a construction companies in the whole state none in the entire state of Vermont, there's no 8A construction companies. I did not know that. He did his research and found that out. What was he looking for? I have no idea. I can't answer that question. But you, Meb, said on here, right, that he went out and researched, right? He found a small city, right, a small city in New York. So all of us go, New York, New York, wow, well, New York, right, Florida, big states. He found a small municipality in New York with a customer that had a need that he fulfilled. How many times did I tell everyone, find someone that has a need, solve that problem. You're a problem solver. And the more problems you can solve, the bigger problems you can solve, the more money you make. You're providing solutions. We're not selling anything. I keep telling people this. We're not selling them. Listen, I didn't, I'm not taking my book that I just wrote and going to the government saying, hey, buy my book. They're like, we don't need a book. But you know what we need? We need book printing services. Can you do book printing services? Yeah, I can do book printing services. So it's up to you to determine, right? Where is your next opportunity gonna come from? What does it look like? From who, who's gonna give it to you? Again, we are taking 20 something year olds with very little experience, if no experience, come from various walks of life, one Africa, acting and people are responding to them and giving them a chance and giving them an opportunity so why is it that they can't give you an opportunity why would they not want to give you an opportunity yes yeah, Seth, let's go live brother you know let's go live um why can't the people give you an opportunity by the way Hold on. Okay. Set, send me a request to go live. How long do I think COVID cleaning contracts will last? I think COVID cleaning contracts will last um, two years, maybe three. They're going to still last even after COVID. Because, I mean, even once we get masks and treatment and stuff, they're still going to be. They're going to say we need to clean up to keep all the, the lingering effects and everything away from it. So I think the COVID contracts are going to go on for at least through 2021 into 2022. 
But again, I'm not a fortune teller, right? I mean, when the COVID contracts um, expire, you move on to the next thing, right? So again, if you've got uh, the equipment to do COVID cleaning, uh, I'm sure that that equipment, you could probably uh, change it and move it to a different area. Hold on, let's go live with my man, Cedric Ross. By the way, I have five minutes left. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll probably jump back on when after the nine o'clock hits. Give me a couple minutes. I'm going to save this video and then we'll jump back on and we'll do probably another 20 or 30 minutes. All right. So I, I, I'm, it's because at 9, 8, 9 p.m. they cut me off. So just I'll, if they cut me off at nine on the dot, I'll save the video and I'll come right back on about 901, 902. And then we'll spend another 20, 30 minutes and we'll just answer everyone's questions. I know you just, you just some people just post questions in here. I would love to get to them, but I had to get the uh, the young guys on today to tell you those stories. So, Seth, where you at, man? So just, if you can, hold off for your questions till after nine. Um, that way we can get to them. We're waiting on Seth to try to log on, get his camera um, working out. I literally have like four minutes. All right. I'll tell you what, since Sad's not on, let me do this. Let me go ahead. I'm going to cut out now and then I'm going to jump back on. So I'm gonna end the I'm gonna end live. We'll turn back around. I'll jump back on after I save this video and then we'll do another 30 minutes. And then said, hopefully you'll get your stuff together by then.